Hey Robin, last time we were together, you told me all about the standard counts. Now I need to know how to actually run this gauge. Okay, well before you're ready to take a measurement, when you get to the job site, you'll wanna find out a few things about the material that you'll be testing. So okay. talk to the job foreman or superintendent, ask them what kind of material it is you'll be measuring, what the layer thickness is of that material, mm -hmm. uh, what the specs are for the job, like the percent compaction that you'll be needing to achieve, sure. and the target for the material, the target density, and if it's a soil material, the target moisture percent. Okay. okay, set your gauge measurement count time to at least one minute or longer if you can. Mm -hmm. um, also set the proper mode, the soil mode or the asphalt mode in the gauge. Soil mode would be for materials like clay, sand, aggregate, things that have moisture in them that helps the compaction process. Uh, asphalt mode would of course be for asphalt material or non-cohesive aggregates. I okay. see. Okay, so every day I need to change these settings in this gauge? Not necessarily. Okay. okay? So the one minute count you'll probably use all the time. Mm -hmm. um, um, the soil or asphalt mode, maybe you'll change it, maybe not. Just depends on your job site. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so, based on the layer thickness, you'll mm -hmm. determine what kind of measurement you're going to take. So, there's backscatter and there's direct transmission. Backscatter would be for soil, asphalt, any uh, material placed in layers of four inches or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Direct transmission is for anything that's placed in a in a layer of over four inches. A four inch layer can go either way. You can do uh, okay. backscatter or direct transmission if it's I four see. inches. But more than four, you'll definitely need to do direct transmission so that you can measure the whole layer from the bottom up. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so there's very little prep, uh, surface prep for mm -hmm. backscatter measurement. Okay. Uh, so the gauge just needs to be sitting in good contact with the material. So gotcha. one way to check that is to press on the corners and see mm -hmm. if it rocks. If it doesn't rock, you're pretty okay. sure you've got good contact. Good. Next thing is to just lower the handle, seat it in the notch, go mm -hmm. past the notch, and then just press the start button and then take a step back. Okay. And wait, well, wait the one minute count time. Once it's done, step forward. First thing is to raise the handle mm -hmm. so you're shielding the source and record your test results on your on your sheet or better yet press the store button so that the results are stored in the gauge memory if your gauge has that capability wow that's really simple yeah backscatter is easier mm -hmm. now if you're doing direct transmission there'll be a little bit more prep work okay, okay. so you'll need these accessories all right okay so there's the scraper plate which mm -hmm. you can use to smooth the side if you okay. need to okay let me try that yeah if all you right. need to you want to have a nice smooth side again just like the backscatter Okay, then Good. your extraction tool goes over the tube. Gotcha. And your drill rod then goes in the tube. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't forget the extraction tool. You'll have trouble pulling this drill rod out. Okay, <laughs> sure. so now there's marks on the drill rod every okay. two inches. So mm -hmm. if this is a six inch layer of soil, we'll drive it to the six inch mark. So right, right. I believe that's two, four, this one's the six inch mark. Oh, okay. Yeah, so third one from the bottom. Gotcha. Now notice there's an act there's actually uh, two inches extra built in, which mm -hmm. is on purpose. So if you're driving it to the six inch notch, you're actually driving it eight inches in the ground. Okay. okay so go ahead and gotcha. drop it to six. Okay. There you go. Here we then go. And grab the extraction tool handles. Okay. And pull straight up. And then best thing to do is to mark the front half of your plate. That way you'll have a footprint to set the gauge inside. So the front half, like a little bit on the sides is good, giving yourself a template to Set the gauge inside, that's perfect. All right. Move the plate out of the way. It takes okay. a little practice, but I can help you out. We'll put the gauge inside that sure. footprint. Right inside there. Mm -hmm. And lower the handle till you get past the four inch notch and then seat it in the six inch six position. Inch. Next thing you want to do is push the gauge this way. Mm -hmm. It won't move much, but it might move a little. And then yeah. press your start button. And again, take a step back while it counts. Okay. And once it's done, you'll hear the beep. And step forward, pull the handle up, and sorry, up in the safe position, and go ahead and record your results or store them in the gauge. Great! So wow. not too difficult. Yeah. Um, if you're not taking another reading right away, you'll want to go ahead and store the gauge in the vehicle, locked up, so it doesn't get lost or stolen. Great! That's super straightforward. Thanks a lot, Robin. No, you're welcome. Okay, a couple questions <clears throat> that we got as a result of the last video. Um, what if my standard count just won't pass? And that's a common question I get. Uh, remember, the pass-fail in the gauge is only as good as the last four that are stored in the memory. So the best thing to do if it won't pass is to just go to your calibration report and use that as the reference. If your density standard is between the upper and lower limit for that month, then it's a good one. If your moisture standard is close to the reference moisture standard within 2%, then it's a good count. Go ahead and accept it and use that count for that day. Okay? 
The other question is, what if I lose my standard block? It's not a good thing. We uh, definitely recommend that you send it in for calibration with the new block. However, some people just can't do that. They need the gauge right away. So if you get the new block, take it to the job site, take a standard count. If it's within the range that's on your calibration sheet that I just talked about, then it's okay to go ahead and use the two together. If it's not in that range, then you definitely should send it in for a, a new calibration. Okay, thanks Great. for listening. And if you have any questions in the meantime, contact us at marketing at troxlerlabs.com. Give us a call, 1-877-TROXLER, or visit our website, www.troxlerlabs.com. Thank you. Thanks.